five at 2.15 in the afternoon. This is the final lap, lap number 10. And the other big number, of course, U.S. Pro Cycling Championships is 17. 17 part making up the lead group. The leaders lead by a minute and two. Previous, the lead was 44 seconds. The big 17 are out there right now, Phil Leggett. They are. When you say final lap, Gary, remember we've still got three smaller circuits to go. Remember last year? Yes, indeed. That's when it can happen. But at the moment, we've got these 17 leaders. And I'll just quickly run through the names for you. George Hincapi, Marty Jemison, and Benoit Joachim, all of the same U.S. Postal team. From the Slovenian team, we've got Ross Mern. From Saturn, we've got Brian Walton and Liebheimer. Harm Janssen of the Netherlands still here. David Klinger is here. Mike Sayers, one of the original escapers, he's here. Then Matt Kishara, David Bramati, the Mape rider. Anton Villatoro, who's an American, is up here. The big sprinter who could take on George for the American crowd, Fred Rodriguez. You've got the little uh, uh, chubby sprinter from Italy, Salvatore <laughs> Camesso. <laughs> and you've got Jacob, Jacob Peel and Sonne from Denmark. And another man who can punch uh, when it comes to a sprint, David McKenzie from Melbourne in Australia. A very fast finisher indeed. It's a good collection of sprinters. You've got fast guys in the front here. And a lot of the decision of how this race is going to be played out is going to be made by team structure, team force. And the Postal Service has done very well to have three riders in the front group, and the Saturns have two. So team numbers are going to be a big factor in the end of this race as the tactics unfold. Well, the weather stayed with us all the way today. It's been a beautiful day, one of the nicest days we've had for some years. We've never seen rain in this race since uh, it began in its 15-year history. There is Freddy Rodriguez, a stage winner this year in the Tour Langkawi. That is an island off the Malaysian coast, but uh, the race itself races all over Malaysia. They just use the name Langkawi for the publicity. Anyway, the race there is a good race for Fred to get his, um, earn his, uh, his teeth in because he is a, a new pro on, uh, on Mape and now showing he's coming through nicely. Earlier this race, we talked to Mark Gorski, the director of U.S. Postal Service, and Mark is back on the line again. Thank you, Mark, for taking the time, because I imagine you're a little bit busy right now, but you've got three of your riders among the big 17. How is your positioning going right now? Are you very happy? You weren't happy before. I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. I'm a happier camper. We got uh, three riders in this lead group of 17. The race really kind of exploded up the wall the last time, and uh, obviously we're happy with... George Hincappy up in the group, and Benoit Joachim is a young rider from Luxembourg, and of course the veteran Marty Demison. I think it's going to be a really interesting last uh, 20 miles or so here. What are the tactics for the team? You've got George Hincappy in front driving the group. What do you plan to do with him? Well, George is strong enough to, uh, to still push the pace here. So I think really the big threat, if it comes down to a field sprint, is is his good friend Fred, Rod Fred Rodriguez from the Mopti team. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, Salvatore Camesso is not going to wait around for the field sprint. I think he and uh, Jakob Thiel of uh, Accept Card are going to provide real formidable challenge in the last, last two or three times up Lemon Hill. So you've got this fill here, Mark. You've got the, just this one climb of the Manny Young Wall. Do you think that uh, Salvatore might try again to rip them apart? Well, I, I told the guys at the meeting this morning that I think the key guy to watch in this race, and particularly those last three small laps of Salvatore Camesso, he's a very strong rider, he's very aggressive, and he's, there's no question he's going to be attacking. It's just a question of when. And we've got to, Marty and Benoit have really got to cover those breaks with, uh, with Salvatore. If it comes down to a sprint between George and Fred, how much do you like your guy? Well, I, I feel good about Fred, about uh, George winning it after 155 miles of racing. You know, Fred is very, very fast, but hopefully he's going to be worn down after 155 miles of racing. So I think that um, George probably has the advantage. But you know what? Any anything could happen. There could still could be some one or two rider get away prior to the field sprint. So it's it's still um, anybody's game at this point. Anything can happen. Right. Thank you very much, Mark Gorski, Director, U.S. Postal Service, taking us some time. He's got so much on his mind. He's coordinating this, coordinating that, but he, he takes a few moments to talk about team strategy, and it could come down to George versus Fred, but he's trying to beat up Fred a little bit right now. Well, you can't blame him because uh, I don't think he'd like to sign Fred for the team, but Fred's got his place on the Italian squad. It is the number one team in the world, and uh, he's, uh, I spoke to him over the weekend, you know, and he's really enjoying his... Uh, 
his life with the Mape boys. But he's on the American ground here, and he would have the right to wear the American jersey if he got that chance for a whole year. And that, under anybody's uh, regime, is fantastic. So he'll try to win, and I think, you know, he will push George all the way. You're getting all set for that sprint, you've you got to get your voice all set well, to go. Well, John Call. got the other one wrong, I'm going to get this one right. <laughs> now it's down to 15 amongst the leaders. Yes, 15 is, uh, no, 15 chasers, still 17 leaders, I'm sorry, 15 17 and chasers. 15. But uh, those chasers, I don't think, are going to get any closer. They're a minute 31 now, they're losing ground uh, because the postal riders in that chase group are trying to interfere with the pace and slow it down. They don't want anybody else to reach George Hincapi now. They feel the combination is right. Hincapi is now in the lead group. You can see from the helicopter here the gap. This race, all of a sudden, is split right along Franklin, uh, along uh, Kelly Drive here. Uh, because of the pressure which is being applied at the front. This is going to be a tough race for the last, as uh, Mark Gorski said, 20 miles or so. Mike McCarthy, can you hear us? Yes, sir, I'm right here. Mike McCarthy on the motorcycle. What just happened there? We Martin we... Sona of Accept Car decided he'd had enough of the bickering. Postal was bickering a little bit with Mape there about who was supposed to do all the work. Martin Sona took off, followed closely by Jeminson, Harm Jansen, who's been up here all day long, and Brian Waller, the Saturn team, these guys have a good 15-second gap on the field right now. Uh, Mape is back there chasing a little bit, but certainly a very brave move at this point, coming into the face of the Maniunk wall here. A uh, big move, though. Certainly a perfect way for the Postals to force the Mape to chase. Are the Mape indeed chasing? Well, the key here is that the only American in the breakaway is Marty Jeminson of Postal. They don't need to chase this breakaway in order to retain the U.S. national title. Uh, there's a Canadian, a Dutchman, and a Dane in the break, along with Marty Jevonson. So the national championship is up the road as far as the rest of the breakaway is concerned. So the point of information, obviously, if you don't win the race, but the first American to cross, that'd be Marty Jemison, he is could get yet? the, uh, the, the uh, overall championship, the, the, uh, the jacket. Well, this is really, this is really quite interesting. Now there's Commerso trying to put matters to right again as they start to react to once more because uh, Jemison up in that league group, Brian Walton is a shrewd operator and you know he looks for these moves, that's how he wins his races and if he gets another chance he'll go away from them alone. We did expect Accept Card to use Sonner because Peel is the sprinter and Sonner has gone clear in this group with Jemison as well and this is now a new solid working group and once again George Hincapie is going to have to decide whether he chases down in the end his own man, Marty Jemison, uh, because they're on the same team, and they're both American, of course. Let's have a look how it all happened here. As Sonner launched the attack, this is Harm Janssen. The Dutchman at least spotted something going on, uh, because uh, Sonner goes down on the outside in the blue colours of Accept Card. Janssen looks across. They, they simply were messing about, nobody reacting here, and Sonner had had enough of it, that's why he went. Janssen rarely misses a trick and was straight onto the wheel of Sonner, put his head down and went, and that was how we started. Fortunately, Marty Jemison saw what was going on and he bridged the gap along with Brian Walton in the yellow colours there. Heading up to the Manny Young wall this time, and it's going to be a very nervous ascent now because the riders behind are going to wait till the wall and the strong men only will rip out of that chase group, which is now down to uh, 13 riders, unlucky for some. They'll have to try and bridge the gap on the wall, and once over the top, we should see uh, another different type of break up front. Arm Jansen has been looking a bit weak on the hills. He's been dropping off the back of the breakaways. Is he actually weak, or is he just very clever? Because he always seems to find himself back up in the front. This climb up the wall is crucial for, every, for everyone, but it'll also be a big telling sign for what Harm Janssen is going to be able to do today. But he is a clever guy, Phil. He is a clever guy. I think he is weak on the climbs, John. He gambles on the fact that he can race back on the flat, but he's already losing a few yards off the back of this break, and we're on the flat. He's probably thinking of the wall by now, because his tenth time up the wall, it's beginning to wear on a man that hates the climb. But uh, Janssen, well, if he can hang in there, he'll be back with them again. And he has no problems getting over the top of Lemon Hill. Crowd again cheering them on for the last time, remember now, in this part of the course. As they go round to start the climb again, the four leaders, we've got Jemison, uh, Sonner, Walton and Janssen. Four nationalities here, only one American, and it's only the American who can win out the national title. But the others, of course, can take out the first prize, and that's $33,000. On to the lower slopes then of the Manion Wall for the final time. Marty Jemison, who is quite a good climber, is willing to set the pace at the front, followed by Sonner the Dane on the Accept Card team. And uh, these two I would expect to see go. But watch out for Brian Walton because they won't chase him down. They won't chase him. 
and right in front, Marty Jemison. He's an American with 10 years of European professional racing experience. He knows exactly what he's doing. Lots of Tour de France is in his legs, and it's no secret, it's no surprise that he's at the front powering up this climb right now. A strong man with a lot of depth in his fitness. But what is going to happen behind? 18 seconds is the gap as they start the climb over the Hincapi group. Now, Hincapi and uh, Commesso, Salvatore Commesso, they must go on this slope this time because if they don't, they might see this four-man group go clear. And a lot of guys will be thinking the same way in that chase group of 13 riders. They've let an awful lot of cars in behind these leaders at this stage of the race. And I think uh, that's not good, no, not good because all. the riders behind will use those cars as an attraction. Normally it's not allowed either. Looks as though uh, Brian Walton is beginning to dangle a little bit here. Just shows you how well Marty Jemison is climbing this climb. They've lost Jansen. Jansen's been dropped. Walton hanging on by a thread. He's still there, Walton. He's a very, very brave rider. For me, the responsibility right now behind is on the chasers, is on the Mape team. But instead, at the front, you have the Mercury team forcing the pace. Comesso in the red on the right. Rodriguez on the left. Watch Comesso. He's accelerating, and, and Hincap has chosen Comesso to follow. He knows the right wheel. He's sitting behind the little man in red because there's a lot of boys at the back of this group now struggling. But Jemison has found an ally here in Sonne. He's gone to the front. Walton, as we come to the top of the climb, has recovered, but no sign yet of Harm Janssen of the Netherlands. Walton putting on an excellent ride. Very, very good rider. He's a bit older now. He's in his 30s but one of the greatest ever Canadian bicycle racers. And he has been in the front many times in this bicycle race. He's no stranger to the tactics of the last half hour of this bike race. He'll be one to watch. It certainly will. And this crowd has stayed here since 9 o'clock this morning to enjoy oh. this spectacle. What a wonderful sight. The last time they're attacking the wall, you can hear the enthusiasm of these people celebrating. I'm sure they don't even know who half these people are, but they don't care. It's just a lot of fun to, to watch the world go by. Your little home in Maniunk, your marvelous place to watch the best race in the world. Also got Irving Fryer at the bottom of this. So we talked about the speed of these guys at 50 miles an hour. Irving, with the help of a police department, was able to get a radar gun. So we're going to see just how fast they go as we'll just check out if some of these guys might be speeding on the streets of Philadelphia. Yeah, Gary, I'm here at the bottom of the fall after the wall, and we're going to try to catch these guys, the leaders, coming down and try to clock how fast they're going here on the 10th lap. You know, last year there was an average, the leaders, the winners, went at about an average of just over 24 miles an hour. It's starting to get real loud, and the leaders are getting ready to come down at the top of the fall after the wall. We're going to try to see if we can clock them as they come down here on the 10th lap. I find it very, very unbelievable that these guys can maintain this speed after going around this this track for so long i went up the wall one time gary and i was out of breath well, i couldn't do it Ir Irv, uh, we had a radar gun on, on your uh, climb <laughs> it was minus one mile an hour uh, you were going backwards well here come the guys right here we're going to try to clock those guys and we're going to try to see how fast they're coming gary all right Irv, phil let's get back in the race one more time manny Unk wall Manny Young Wall, now there are three left at the front because, oh, these there guys he comes, are just as I speak, John, he's back on, that's great. These guys are going some 30 miles an hour, in excess of 30 miles an hour, Gary, and that's unbelievable at this point at, at, at the race. These guys are heading towards the home stretch, heading towards the finish line, they're going to finish strong. All right, thank you, Irving Fryer, trying to finish strong. You see some of the uh, interplay here amongst the riders. Harm Jensen, back on the back, as you said, Phil, tenacious. He just will not give up. Jamison riding one of the races of his life. Chance to become the United States professional champion. Jamison's laying it all down, going for everything he has. He just wants to drive that breakaway to the finish line. Even if he gets fourth place, he'll still be the national champion. That's his motivation. But behind him, Woo! defending champion, wow. George Hincapie, he's, number one. He's cooking. He's got to be angry. Break is not going his way. He'd like to win this title and win the race, as he did last year. George is a champion now. He wants to win it all. It is heating up. We'll be back with more U.S. Pro Cycling Championships. Heading down the stretch of the Maniac Wall for the 10th time. We'll be back with more right after this. Do not go away. Back live U.S. Pro Cycling Championships. Those are your leaders, the big group. And out of those will be the champion. Who will it be? Does Hincapie have it? Maybe a Fred Rodriguez. Great duel going on today between the two young Americans, and both of them have missed the boat as this breakaway 
has gotten away, has given them the slip with American Marty Jemison out in front with every chance to become the United States professional champion this year as he is the only American bike rider in this breakaway of four riders. Well, Morton Sonner, who's trying to uh, shape this win for Accept Card, it's 29 seconds now, the gap has gone up and there's an attack coming as well as they're tempting them out to come and play a game. This is an attack by Mappe, I think, as they try to readdress the situation because that gap is getting a little bit unwieldy right now. I don't think it was Fred Rodriguez who launched that attack. In fact, I think it was probably David Br Bramati who's trying now to get them to react to this four-man chase group. Morton Sonno, Brian Walton of Canada, Harm Janssen of the Netherlands, Marty Jemison of the USA, the man who would run out the champion automatically if those four stayed away to the finish. And, uh, well, in many ways, of course, US Postal would be happy enough with that because the champion would stay on their team. The Mape do have the responsibility, from my point of view anyway, for this race right now. Bramati has to work for Rodriguez. Rodriguez has the race winning weapons. He can sprint. He can beat the other ones. They all come down together. And Bramati has to go to the front of this bunch, put his head down, and force. And bring it back together to try to catch these men, the leaders, who are in front. Four-man breakaway. Marty Jemison, Martin Sonner, Arm Janssen, Brian Walton. Approaching the finish of this bike race. Sonner at the front now. And the accept card colors. Remember at the start of the race, they had to chase with the whole team uh, to catch an early breakaway. And this is why they had two men they felt capable of winning this race. And if they do win it, it'll be the biggest uh, purse they've ever won in their cycling career. None of these boys have won races like this. In fact, a Jakob Peel was placed in this race last year, uh, but he didn't actually get up for the big win. He finished in ninth place. Back to the chasers uh, and Salvatore Camesso didn't go on the climb of the Maniunk wall last time up. There's no more climbs now. There he is out of the saddle looking across. Uh, and just think that, yes, that was his team car that's come up to him there to give him some tips about how, how to handle the situation now because he's isolated in this group. And it does seem he was the rider's favorite to win because they've watched him all of the way. And we're looking now again at the leader, Marty Jemison, who rode so well up the, up the wall. And so too did the rider behind him, Morton Sonner. Brian Walton seemed to struggle that little bit, but he's recovered. And what can you say about Harm Janssen? He's been dropped every time on the climb, and he's come straight back on on the descent. So he's a man who would outspin anybody in this breakaway, given the chance. Very clever ride, very clever rider. The Accept Card team have been highly active throughout this week of the first Union Cycling Series. They've been on the attack, forcing the pace, making breakaways, winning races. Jakob Peel won the first Union Invitational in Lancaster last Tuesday in terrible, slippery conditions at the end where he fell twice, got back on, and still won the race in the, in the last lap of the event. But the man right here in our screen, Marty Jemison, is forcing the pace. He's really played the proper card for the U.S. Postal Service. Back in the second group, a lot of disagreement. Who's going to chase? Who's not going to chase? It's up to the Postals. Bang! Jamison went off the road. Now he's forcing this chase group behind to come get him. Hincapi sitting there, happy to have Jamison off the road. 30 seconds. David McKenzie hasn't been off the back of this group as far as I've seen. I hope we're not doing it. I miss justice. Uh, but this group now is looking as though it might be slipping out of contention here because once we get back down to the Ben Franklin Parkway, we do three laps of a small circuit of around about 10 miles in total, bringing them back to the final finish. Hincapi is not going to damage Marty Jemison's advantage. He's going to sit here and follow wheels until he sees his chance. Because I think George, if he can't win the title himself, would be delighted to see Marty Jemison, one of the workers on US Postal, who rarely gets the big win, take out that jersey. It's one of the tough tactical decisions that this race poses to the teams, to the American teams. Do you race to win the race, or do you race to win the jersey? And in this case, this is a tough decision. George sees the race slipping away. But his teammates up there, his teammate might not win the race, but will surely win the jersey as the first American. And it's a quandary that the Americans have been put into every year that you've had uh, this system in these events. And it's a tough decision at times. But for Marty Jamison, it's working very well. There's a lot of pressure going on again at the front here because they've just got the message that the chase group is down to 20 seconds on them and they're closing in fast. And Jakob Peel is also putting himself into a launching position. He could be up soon and he's the danger man on the accept card team. Jakob Peel, a very fast sprinter. I understand that we have Mark Gorski on the line. Mark, here's the big question we're all asking right now. Do you win the race or do you win the jersey, Mar uh, Mark? 
Well, we want to do both, and the race is still a long ways from being over. And I, as I said before, Comesso is attacking right now. But uh, Marty's in great position. This is kind of we, – we knew we had to put people other than George in the serious moves near the end, and Marty's done that. We can, uh, we can still win the race and the jersey. We want to do both. But uh, we still got 11 or 12 miles of racing left. There's still a lot that's going to happen. Mark, you, uh, last night you announced U.S. Postal Service were continuing their backing of your team for a further two years. Now, this would be a nice present, wouldn't it? It really would. The, the U.S. Postal Service has been tremendously supportive of our team. We've really put together a great group of uh, young Americans in this team and really built around Lance Armstrong and George Tincappy. We're really proud of them, but um, no one's going to give us this race. We've got to earn it today, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Have you actually spoken to the riders from the car? Have you said anything to George or Marty at all? Yeah, we've talked throughout. We've got radio contact with both George and Frankie uh, via the remote radio. So we've been talking ongoing. And uh, George, is um, he's happy to let Marty win this jersey. He'd be happy, would he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because so George at the moment is just going to play passenger. And if it comes together, he'll have had an easier ride up to the leaders again, I guess. That's right, exactly. Terrific. Okay, Mark, well, we're going to watch it unfold. It's all going to happen in the next half an hour or so. Good luck. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Mark Korski, Director of Team U.S. Postal Service. Also, Mike McCarthy's down there. We're trying to get him dialed up as well, see what's going down. He's the guy on the motorcycle riding alongside the riders. But as he said, if uh, George, in his mind, wouldn't be very thrilled if Marty won the, uh, the race and the jersey or just the jersey. And it's certainly a good way for a team leader like Hincappy to create loyalty for himself by showing himself to be unselfish and saying, OK, my teammate can win. I'm happy with that. That is how a leader builds consensus among the team to work for him in the big races. Well, George is the most modest of people. He's never changed. And now he's getting himself up amongst the top riders in the world with some great performances. He still hasn't changed. He's still the same modest guy. He lives down in Charlotte these days. But as John Huston said, he comes from the area of Queens in New York. Sorry about the noise, but they're back in town. Here they come. The boys are back in town. The boys are back. And so is Salvatore Comesso. Back on the attack, not willing to let this breakaway go away. He's had to go on Lemon Hill. And now, can George Hincapie follow him? Because this is going to be crucial. They go up this climb three more times of Lemon Hill before the finish, but that's not many more miles from the actual finish. Now we turn on to the climb. We caught a glimpse of Harm Janssen again in trouble on that climb. That rider in front is Jakob Peel, who's trying to go forward by himself, and Salvatore Comesso has gone after him. If they get together, we're going to have to say, where is George? Because he'll need to match this one. Comesso, Jakob Peel going up the road. Once again, it's the decision on Hincapi. These are not Americans. These are more riders to reinforce the breakaway and help carry Marty Jemison to an eventual victory. Quickly, Tom Schuler, director of Saturn. Now you're on the phone with us right now. Tom? Trying to get hold of Tom Schuler, the director of Team Saturn. We'll get him in a second. Tom. Hopefully, hopefully Tom dialed all 10 digits. Otherwise, uh, we have some problems. These guys are together now. Sun and field together about 200 meters behind. Trying, trying to get Renee Wenzel as well, the other director of Team Saturn. But I guess, as I said, you got to dial all 10 digits now in Philadelphia. Maybe well, those parts. Maybe they forgot to dial the 215. Even you, I knew you got to dial everything. You got to have every finger and thumb going these days. When you think uh, of the marvels of the technical world to bring all this live action to you, to speak to all these people all around the course, I think the guys are doing a pretty good job. And they're bringing us these live pictures of attack after attack is being launched now. And this is uh, tough for Marty Jemison. He's hanging on to the back wheel here of Harm Janssen because gone up front now is uh, Sonner. And I think gone with him too is Brian Walton. So they split the lead group. And the news is the chase is on behind and Hincapie's not there. Incapi's not there, but Brian Walton is the Saturn rider once again at the front of the United States Professional Championship, forcing the pace. This tremendous young Canadian is full of heart and tough legs. Well, what happened goes. was, yeah, Morton Sonner has gone back. He dropped back because he heard Jakob Peel was coming up. He dropped back from those four leaders. He's picked up his team leader, and he's taking him back up towards the front. That's an incredible piece of teamwork here by uh, Morton Sonner. He actually left the front four because... 
The other rider who was coming up, Jakob Peer, was 20 seconds back. He waited for him on the climb of Lemon Hill, and they've just gone by our commentary box now. These are the three leaders, and very shortly we are going to see two Danish riders rejoin. And then they have real problems here, because Jakob Peel is a winner if ever there was one today. Fantastic rider who's performed very well in the mountainous races of France, the great races such as the Midi Libre. If he gets up there, he's strong and he's fast, and he's got the numbers with a second teammate. This is last year where we had the confusing part when I think it was Lolly thought the finish line was right now, forgot about the three extra circuits, yeah. and raised his hands and thought he was the winner. He mustn't do that, you're right, Not because this we're going year. out now on lap one of three which will only be three miles around. Lemon Hill's not that far away, and it'll take us from 147 through the 150 mile mark. But what a great race this is turning out to be now. Marty Jemison, the only American, is riding to the stars and stripes of the American champion. There are the four leaders. There are the two Danes making contact. Great riding by uh, Sonner and incredible race reading by Jakob Peel. How they were able to pass the message to one another they were chasing, I don't know, but they knew. Wonderful ride on the part of this Danish team. Now we have five leaders in front and only one American, Marty Jemison, a Canadian in Brian Walton. North America represented by two riders, but only one of the North Americans will be the national champion. And that can only go like to Postal Services. Marty Jemison, as the breakaway gets stronger and has even and more chances of pulling away from the chase behind. And we have to remember that Harm Janssen, yo-yo, yes, on the big climbs, but he's no longer on the big climbs anymore. He will be, I think, the fastest sprinter here. He's a very rapid finisher. He's a very shrewd bike rider. And the, the Dutchman is in there now. The two Danes will have to watch out. But look at this now as they continue to launch attack after attack from this league group here. Marty Jemison is now turning the screw as well at the front. This is a superb end now. They do not want anybody from that group behind to make contact. And it is still possible they can. But you know, when I this is the group coming up now. I took a look at the face of Comesso when he went past our commentary box. He was suffering now. So too was Bramati. And in this group too is Rodriguez and George Hincapi. So really, George would do well to keep this group behind. He's looking over his shoulders on the left of our picture there because Jemison would automatically take out the U.S. title for U.S. Postal if the breakaway stayed. Big failure on the part of Mape, Ramati, not strong enough to carry Rodriguez to the front of this bike race. And now, Bill Ligon, I think that is Rodriguez in second position, yep. trying to come back up, trying desperately to get up to the front. It is! Fred Rodriguez, number 81, the American on Mape. Look at the gap, it's one minute, they're slow down. It's going to be very difficult. Attack. Behind this attack, attacking group, on the left, on the right, any complaints about this race not being aggressive can certainly be put to rest with this finale of the event, of the day's events, as we call it today. David McKenzie tried to launch an attack to get up to the leader here. Salvatore Camesso has gone again. I said he was tired. I must have been wrong. He's trying desperately now. There's a one-minute gap. That's a long way with only nine miles left to run of this race. Back with the leaders again now. And this is the man who's ridden so well for his teammate, Morton Sonner. Drops off, picks him up, brings him back, puts him in the lead group. That is incredible bike riding by the two Danes. And remember, we know now why Accept Card chased down that early breakaway almost six hours ago. We thought they were wasting energy. They had a plan that was going to be unfolding only in the last half hour of racing. They have ridden this race well, and in fact, uh, John, they deserve to win. They have ridden beautifully, and they've been climbing in their form and their condition throughout the entire week. It's a new team, a young team, but a highly, highly organized team from their bikes to their presentation to their clothes to their training schemes. And as you see their progression, it's no surprise to see them at the front at the end of a race like today. Denmark is a small country. They have about 25 top-rate cyclists, though. They turn them out one after another. They don't excel at winter sports, even though they're in Scandinavia, like their neighbours, Norway and Sweden and Finland do. Uh, they seem to enjoy the summer sports. And, of course, they provided the winner of the Tour de France a couple of years ago in Bjorn Aris. Now, I wonder if they're going to provide the winner here because it's beginning to look that way. They've pulled over a minute out of the race now, and they are looking like the strong men of the breakaway. They're certainly not being shy about riding at the front of this breakaway group. Forcing, look, he's got a gap. Forcing, attacking, trying to break this breakaway up into pieces. The aggression is wonderful and astounding at the same time. No Dane has ever won the first year in the U.S. Pro Championship. In the old days, we called it the core stage. It's been going since 1985, and no Danish rider has ever won. They've been close, but they've never been first. 
and to pick up a check for $33,000, well, there's no way this team has ever had such a first prize in their lives. Uh, not many races in the entire world. Only a couple of the very top ones, such as the Tour de France, do offer this kind of money. So the quality of the organization, the size of the crowd, that's what stimulates these riders as well as the money. Well, this is Ross Mern, the Slovenian, who has ridden so well here on the right in the blue colors, trying to get back on terms with the leaders. And uh, I think he's got one of the uh, composite riders with him from America as they try to get across on Lemon Hill, but they're now in a little bit of no man's land here. I think they're just ahead of the Hincapi group and they're nearly a minute behind the breakaway group, which is now totaling uh, some uh, five riders. This race is really broken up into pieces. I mean, as we said, any complaints about aggression, forget it, because it's just been tough. You have riders all over this race course by the end of this bike race. There were some com complaints earlier as well, saying that the race course wasn't hard enough. Well, that is certainly not an issue today. This is a race of strength and aggression. Well, as they continue now, we're looking down at the five leaders. Let me remind you, there are two Danes, one Canadian, an American, and a, a Dutch rider in this breakaway. It's difficult to become more international than that. And Brian Walton, well, he's ridden this race. His best ever finish, by the way, was a fourth place for Brian a couple of years back. He's been a consistent rider here, ridden a lot on the American team. Saturn, you know, could still take out this race with Brian Walton. He doesn't qualify, of course, to be the US champion because he's Canadian. On the front, Arjun Sona forcing the pace, doing what he has to do as a teammate, is get this breakaway away from the chasers and ensure that his fast teammate, his sprinter, Jakob Peel, is in position to win this at the end. This is the move that you're seeing by the accept card that you would have wanted to see, or Fred Rodriguez would have wanted to see, from his teammate, Davida Bramati. You didn't see it, and now Fred is in the back, or trying to get up to this, this five-rider group in front. His chances looking slim. Well, I'm just wondering now, as the chasers have regrouped here behind those five leaders, as somebody else shoots off the front as well, there's no rest now for these, as they try once again, there's uh, Liebheimer gone through for Saturn as well, George is going through, but just keeping an eye on the field. Well, I was just thinking, uh, John, Jill uh, Jemison is here working with the organization of US Postal. She never really shows a bias for her husband, but she must be getting pretty excited about this now. There's a real chance he's going to pull off the national title. There's every chance in the world with teammates like George Hincapie behind, with the allies that he has, the natural allies of the accept card riders driving the breakaway in front. Marty Jemison has every chance of winning a title that he absolutely deserves. He's been one of the one of the foot soldiers of American cycling for the past 10 years, working for the others, forcing issues, creating winners from other riders, and for him to be able to wear the stars and stripes would be a highly deserved cherry on the cake of his career, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Going through in the lead then at the moment, we've got uh, Jakub Peel. He flicks his arm there. That's the sign he's moving over to let the next man come through and do a bit of pacemaking. He'll slip to the back. They've got to keep working together and not think that they are rivals at this moment because the race is not far behind them. Then Walton does his little bit and turns off. Then Marty Jemison goes through just a little bit by him and turns off. Then comes through uh, Sonner. He'll swing off. And then comes through the last rider in the breakaway, Harm Janssen. Harm may be tied on the hills, but he never shirks his job in the race when he is in this league group on the flat. And he's such a nice peddler, and he still could win this race in the sprint. And it just shows you, John, and you well know it as a bike rider, no matter how much you suffer, you must never give up hope. Now, uh, Janssen is a real, a real example of how to ride a bike race and how never to quit. The Dutch produce race winners. Yeah. They, they have, they're fast, they know how to ride their bikes, they, 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 they come up just as clever as can be, and he's going to be a real danger man in the sprint, but Jakob Peel as well, a track rider, a six-day rider, he can win. Well, here they are. Uh, Salvatore Comesso must be feeling at this stage, his race has been run, it looked like he was shaping up to be the winner. But he's got to get himself organized in this chase now, which is back on the Ben Franklin Parkway. One rider just ahead, I think, that it is David Bramati. The only other man from Mape is Fred Rodriguez. But one rider clear, and we'll pick him up very shortly. But it's Fred himself now who's gone clear. Fred trying to get across. Yes, it is as he goes through. So Rodriguez the, uh, is number two American on the course now, but number one is the one that becomes the national champion. And he is the rider in that league group at the moment, number two. He is the leading American on the road in this front group of five riders. And the two Danes are going to work their hearts out now to win this. 
Now, you see ahead, you see that big field? Well, that is the end of the bike race. So these leaders are lapping the riders. And there's something like, I think it must be 14 miles ahead now of that group in front. So they, I guess, will be pulled off. But uh, if they're not, it's going to be a commentator's nightmare. But I think we'll be safe, John. It could also <laughs> be a disadvantage for the chasers from behind because if the riders in front pass that group, that group is long. That group could make up another 15, 20 seconds, which would, in, in essence, bring the breakaway group 15 to 20 seconds closer to the chasers behind. However, good yep. professionals that they are, they're all sitting up, slowing down, taking themselves out of the competition, and making sure that they're not wow. affecting the outcome of the race. Wow. Great professionals, and also on the left there in the, in the striped zebras, as we call the motorcycle-mounted officials, they are doing their job as well to make sure that this, this lap field slows down. Well, I have to say that I don't think I've seen that in this race before, where they've lapped such a large group as that, and the front end of this race has really flown. Here's the crowd now on Lemon Hill, as we go up it for second time of these short laps. And still, Janssen, you see, immediately yo-yos at the back. Boy, this man is suffering as he tries and tries. He almost knocked the referee off his motorbike there. But it's the priority riders, let's get it right, as he tries to get back onto the back wheel of the group. Here's Rodriguez now. He is trying desperately to reach those leaders. He is around about 50 seconds of catching them. That's a long way to ca catch the leaders at this stage of the race. And he's also got to remember that the grace behind is about 10 seconds back. Officially now, 45 seconds, Rodriguez. He's catching them. He's making up time, but with only six miles or so to go, is it going to be enough time, Phil? Can he make up 45 seconds and six miles? That's an awfully tough task. It is, especially now, because we're on the climb of Lemon Hill for Fred. The rest of the leaders have gone over the top about 45 seconds ago. Janssen hanging on the back there. The elastic stretches every time, but it twangs and he gets back into the group again. And remember that the Ben Franklin Parkway is on the flat and he can finish with a great sprint. Back to the front, here are the leaders, two accept card riders, Brian Walton of the Saturn team, Marty Jemison, the American for the U.S. Postal Service, and the man who's been on the attack all day, Arm Janssen of the Netherlands. Janssen still there, over to the far right, just done his bit at the front again, he drops down to the back of the line now, and settles in again. Brian Walton is the lone cyclist now, he's finished his turn at the front, he's going to the back seat. We call the back rider the ticket collector, because he sits there and can watch everything that's going on. But they, in the end, they're all working here now. This is a desperate escape. It didn't look as though it was going to work, but now it most certainly does. And I can't forget that fine piece of riding as we look at Rodriguez chasing here that was done by the Denmark rider, uh, Morten Sonner, to go back from the group, pick up his mate, and take him up to the leaders. That will stay in my mind for a long time. Not to beat up on the Mape riders, but Rodriguez here with the form that he's showing here. He could have used a rider like Martin Sonner. With one strong Mape rider there, it might have been a whole different story for Rodriguez. An example of the strength and the importance of the teams in high-level professional bicycle racing. Well, Fred lost five seconds of Lemon Hill. It's gone back to 50 now, and uh, the race behind is closing in on him once again. And I think as Fred hasn't made it, it'll be lucky now for them as we swing back onto the Benzeroon Franklin Parkway with the five leads of the crowd, giving them an enormous cheer and a clap. Not many more times now. They come down here on lap number two of three. There's Marty Jemison. Now we can start to talk about him as the United States champion elect, I think, and it will stay with the US Postal Services into Europe for another year. That's what they wanted. George Hincapi had all eyes focused on him. Every move he made, he had riders with him. He was still able to force himself into the front, but when it looked like it wasn't going his way, unselfishly, he sent his lieutenant on the attack and basically gave away the national champion jersey. A fine moment in Hincapi's career that he showed this lack of selfishness and maybe the example that Lance Armstrong provided last year for Hincapi, sacrificing himself for the young man from Queens, has been learned by Hincapi, who has now turned the tables and done the same for his teammate, Marty Jemison. Wonderful cohesion on the part of this United States Postal Service team. Well, we have five riders out in front still. Fred Rodriguez is around about 50 seconds. Um, there was actually a, a little bit of a scare here down the start finish just then as they announced 35 seconds for Rodriguez, but they were timing them off a lapped group of riders. I thought he'd actually flown over the top of Lemon Hill. But he's around about 50 seconds for Fred. He's making his big effort. There are the police now in formation. 
as they've, they've made this yet again a fine safe race for all the cyclists and a great day of enjoyment for the public and now we're waiting to see which one of five because i think the winner is here will it be morton sonner or jakob peel of the accept car from denmark brian walton the ever consistent canadian uh, from saturn marty jemison the u.s boy certain if he gets the line to win at least the national championship if not the race and harm jansen the rider from holland who lives here in the states now and races on an american team Great shots of the beautiful spectacle that is professional bicycle racing. The police in front, we can barely hear ourselves as they go by, the cars, the follow cars, and the bicycles themselves. Magnificent spectacle. One lap to go, one short three-mile lap to go, and my goodness me now, the shivers of fear must run down the spines of these riders. They're three miles from the finish. They have had to really race to get into this final selective group. Harm Janssen yo-yos continually. He's on the back at the moment. He's now three miles from a crack at the sprint finish, and he can sprint. Jakob Peel, who won here on Tuesday in Lancaster, is a fine finisher as well. And Marty Jemison, he's got one prize if he comes to line. Can he make it two? He's certainly shifted his priorities now. He knows that the national championship is in the pocket or as close as you can get in a bicycle race. And now Marty Jemison is thinking, okay, how can I win this bicycle race? How can I beat these two except card riders who are going to be so clever and so fast at the end of this bike race? Well, there's a tremendous roar for Fred Rodriguez, who's just gone through in pursuit. It didn't seem like 50 seconds, I have to say. And in fact, it wasn't. It's officially timed at 46. Uh, John Wilcox alongside me telling me that and uh, so he started to close in again at two and a half miles from the finish for the five leaders it's going to be desperately close back in the front the five riders on the last approach to Lemon Hill the last time up the Lemon Hill tremendous crowd there all the conoscenti if you will of the sport gather there to, to watch the race and make their way back to the parkway for the finish last chance last ramp of attack for many of these riders crucial point of the race coming up now and don't forget what could also happen, John, is because two or three of these riders in the front are very evenly matched, they might well slow down. And if they slow down, Rodriguez will be on them, and he could sprint better than any of them. Fred Rodriguez, he's yep. got this big chase he's doing. He's really showing the depth that he's developed as a professional, not just a sprinter, but a strong man as well. And once again, he's got to be bemoaning the lack of a teammate in today's race. Yeah, they were short on them. Bramati did his best for them, but really Bramati was the only one that got into that split. The Seiko boys, uh, well, they will be disappointed with their performance. When on the Young wall, a couple of laps in the last few circuits there, they looked so good, and they looked as though they were going to break this field. But they certainly started the race moving, uh, which developed into this leading group. Onto the Lemon Hill again. This for the last time now. The crowd has watched them for just on six hours from this vantage point. It won't be a record time. It won't be far out. Uh, but it won't be a 6.01 today because the clock is already reached now uh, six hours dead and they won't get from Lemon Hill to the finish in one minute Gary no, no. so we'll see now if anybody can make a move on Lemon Hill well the one man who hasn't made a move this time is Janssen he's still in there clever rider all of a sudden he's not getting dropped on the hill and 43 seconds to Fred he's still chipping away don't give up now Fred because at worst you'll finish sixth and best, second best American rider, and that certainly is a great result as well. He's had a third in this race in the past, by the way, in 1996, when he was developing. Uh, he's riding for a different team then, but now he's on the big team, the best team in the world. They recognize his talent, and we're seeing this young man now develop into a great road racing cyclist. It won't thing, be long before the Tour de France for him, John. One thing he's done as well today, Fred Rod Rodriguez, is he's proven himself as a capable team leader. Okay, the team wasn't up to it today, but he was. And yeah. they'll, they'll remember that. They'll go, okay, we supported him, and he came through. We weren't strong enough, but the kid knows how to take responsibility. But back to the race, it's Marty Jemison in the front, on the attack, chasing someone in front. Brian Walton back on the attack. He had to go there because Brian unfortunately can't sprint. He had to try and get away there and he didn't do that now. And so the counter-attack is coming once again from the from Morton Sommer. Sommer has been a brilliant teammate and I can't uh, do anything but think he is trying to set this up for his teammate uh, Peel because he went off, he brought him onto the race lead and now he's doing all the blocking and we're not seeing Peel take part in the action. He is waiting for the final attack of the home straight. There was a very strong tailwind of that finishing straight about an hour and a half ago, but now the flags in places have dropped limply on the stand. So maybe that tailwind advantage has dropped now in the finish. Brian Walton, Marty Jemison, an attack on the left. This is the attack running on the right. 
This is the run into the finish now, as again it's an attack from Soma. The, once more it's being counted, I think, as we look down, two riders trying to get clear. There's a lot of nerves being portrayed here now. The riders looking at each other all of the time as they come down now onto the Benjamin Franklin Parkway for the very last time. Harm Janssen is the man Harm, in the front. Harm Can you Janssen. believe that? Janssen and Jakob Peel, the two sprinters together, and they're not waiting for the sprint. They're going for gold right down the straight that a mile from the finish. Janssen and Peel are together. Harm Janssen been hiding, pretending to be dropped, but at the same time, he's found himself in front every time. You've got to admi admire the pluck, tenacity, and guile of his uh, rider from the Netherlands. He's such a brilliant bike rider. He speaks so many languages as well, so he probably can speak Danish, German, Dutch, and, of course, English. He has read this race well. He's suffered. I mean, he's dropped not voluntarily off on the climbs, and he's going again. He's going to push this race right to the line because he knows, I think he knows he's so tired, he can't r relax and wait for the final sprint. So he's now taking Jakob Peel down towards the bottom turn. He won't want to be first man around that corner. It's an awful long way up the home straight. I don't know if Harm Janssen has ever heard of the phrase playing possum, but he certainly did today on the hills. And now, in the last kilometers of, of the first union United States Professional Championship, the Dutchman finds himself in front with another one of the favorites, Jakob Peel, but... Brian Walton has brought oh, the trio back up. Look for the counterattack. He saw he saw Sonna coming up, and he's kicked again to get the back wheel of Sonna. Do you know, he waited for these guys because he realized he was going to be left front wheel in the wind on the way up. He's waiting for them to join so he can take the second position. He is such a shrewd bike rider, this man, and he was representing the Netherlands at the World Championship more than 10 years ago. That's how long he's been around. Now they're lining up for the finish. They're going to slow right down. They might even see... Fred Rodriguez go down on the other side of the road here as the police complete their circuit of the day in just over six hours. These guys now are going to have to work out the order of the sprint. Now, who's going to lead out? Here comes Marty from the back. He's going to open up the sprint. And it's Jakob Peel taking his wheel now. Ganson dives over for Marty's wheel there. It's going to be close now as, in fact, Brian Walton has gone. Walton has gone now, being followed all the way now by Jakob Peel. Peel is on Walton's wheel. It looks as though Janssen is going to hold on to third and be content with third because Jakob Peel takes it. A brilliant second for Brian Walton. Third will go then to uh, Harm Janssen. There is the man who is the US champion. He finished fifth of five in the end, Marty Jemison, but he is the champion of America. And Jakob Peel, the man who his teammate waited for and brought him to the leaders, has delivered him $33,000. Incredible. Wonderful, wonderful ride. Marty Jemison pulled his foot out of his toes, out of his toe clips, out of his clips. Lost his chance for the sprint, ended up United States champion. Brian Walton riding one of the races of his life. So close. But Jakob Peel comes out of Walton slipstream flying by and wins with the speed of the track rider that he is. Great ride for the rider from Denmark. Another look at the sprint, Phil. Well, this is only his second win this year and his third ever as a professional. And what a time to choose the richest payday in his life. And what about the man I told you couldn't sprint in second place because they're all so tired, he hung on there for second place. And that betters his fourth place finish in 1995 for Brian Walton of Canada. Here they come again. Jakob Peel of Accept Card. I bet they're glad now they did that chase down about 10 o'clock this morning because now into the mid-afternoon they've got the biggest payday of their lives. And poor old Marty Jemison, he pulled his foot off the pedal, I think. Let's see if we can see it here. They strap their feet in like a ski binding. They twist in and it looks as though he may well have twisted it out. Anyway, he's still the United States road racing champion for 1999. And for that, he will receive a Stars and Stripes jersey to race him for the rest of this year. And indeed, until this time next year. What a great finish. What a great call. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, John. And of course, Marty uh, Jamison winning the U.S. Postal, U.S. Postal Team, you in the U.S. Championship as well. And then what happened in Lancaster earlier this week, John, he fell twice on the last lap through the rain. I mean, it was torrential downpour, and he had a feeling at that time he might be able to put it together today. Uh, he certainly did, and he certainly rode an excellent race. Clever, a man who came back from injury to become a top road racer. Jakob yeah. Peel, the overall champion, Marty Jemison, the U.S. champion, will be back with more of the U.S. Pro Cycling Championship until you can take a breath. Wait, thanks. Great call. We'll be back with more right after this. That was something.
Back live, U.S. Pro Cycling Championships. The overall winner was Jakob Peel. He just sizzled down the stretch. Another great sprint to the finish, as we saw with the women's Irving, race. But the star of the show is with Jack Brayboy right now. Hello, Jack. You got the guy. I got the guy right here. You got here. the guy. Yes, Jakob Peel. Jakob, tell us about um, the final tactical uh, decisions that you guys made that uh, created a situation that you had uh, in order to win. First, they went four riders away, and I was, like, sitting in the next group, and uh, there was nobody who wants to race. Everybody, all the big teams had one rider in the front, and they kind of look at each other, and then I took the chance and went away, and uh, my teammate in the front, he was waiting for me, and then I was coming in the first group, and then we said, uh, if they don't cooperate, we're going to make some attacks, and in the start, we did that, and then they said, okay, everybody has to work to get this going. And yeah, normally I'm a very fast sprinter, so I said to Morten in the end that he should just take it easy, let everything stay together, so then I could make the sprint, and that worked. Uh, how confident were you, uh, once you got to the situation where you could make the sprint, how confident were you that you were going to come out uh, the winner? I, I was not sure because I know uh, Brian Walton is pretty fast when you have a long race. I, uh, he win last year, he won a race in Denmark, so... It was, it, was, it was him I was looking for, and uh, he was going fast in the start of the sprint, and then I was in the wheel of him, and I could take him the last 100 meters, and that was good. Very good. Congratulations on such a terrific ride today. Jakob Peel, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're going to move on to Marty. Marty from the, yes, absolutely, from the U.S. Postal Service team. Marty, I guess um, you're in a situation where George is obviously the guy who's often the focal point on your team, yeah. but today he gave himself up and uh, allowed you to get up here and uh, come away with uh, the U.S. Pro Championship. Right. Yeah, you know, um, we, we were supporting George 100%. I did everything I could for, for George, uh, covering all the moves, just uh, do, really doing everything. Um, but, you know, secondly, we sort of knew that George would be marked and that if I could get up the road and be the only American, then, uh, you know, I still take our team still takes the U.S. Pro Championship jersey, and that's our objective. So. We still have the jersey, and I think we're going to be excited about that. Tactically, earlier in the race, it sounded like um, there was, uh, the race wasn't going at quite the pace that you guys wanted to, um, but that changed around fairly quickly, actually. Yeah, you know, George even made the call for the team a couple of times on the hill to really give it a lot of, just go as hard as we could to try and break it up, because too many of the teams were keeping it together and, you know, riding controlled on the, on the flat parts, and I think if, if we would have kept that up, there would have been a sprint with a lot of people. Um, so, you know, we really started pushing it hard on the hills and then uh, ac actually going with the attacks, making attacks, and, uh, you know, it worked out in our favor today, and that's, that's what the most important thing. Marty, congratulations. Fourth overall, but first for the U.S. Pro Championship, Marty Jamison of the U.S. Postal Service team. Gary, back to you. All right, Jack, he gets to wear the crown, gets to wear the jacket. Excellent race today. We saw a lot of teamwork. We saw some bad teamwork. Fred Rodriguez out there was left on an island all by himself. That's terrible. Didn't have the help, didn't have the horsepower. Postal Service did. They ended up in front. We had our help. We had our horsepower. We had Mr. Leggett here and Phil. That was a great call down the stretch. And I guess when you see what George did, yeah. is what, what Lance did for him last year, that's what this sport is all about, isn't it? They're professional bike riders. And as long as they get the, the rewards in the team, that's what they aim for. There are good riders on the team. There are helpers on the team. And when you get a helper like Marty Jemison, get the big prize for once, the whole team is happy. And I think it's great. Nice sunglasses there, Phil. So. Well, look at me. I've been cooked on the back for three hours. Now I'm being cooked on the front. It hurts a little bit. Let's go to the official results right now. Check it out. Jakob Peel, Walton, Jansen, Jameson, and Son. Yeah. And your U.S. Pro Champion, Marty Jemison, gets to wear the jacket for next year. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you, John. Thank you, Phil, Good as always. You, Gary. And you know what's coming up? Your second favorite sport, I bet. Soccer. Oh, I know so much about that. Coming up. You want, you want to do the commentary well, on there as well? I'll, I'll just watch on this occasion. All right, let's watch know. it right now. <laughs> it is women's soccer, USA and Canada right now. USA is leading by the score of 3-2. It's in the second half. Thanks for everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show today. We'll see you all next year. I'm Gary Papa. Goodbye.